gentlemen, we did it. We made an airplane that's slightly overweight, slightly over budget, and a little underpowered. Kind of like the rest of my airplanes. But it flies. Oh, also, before we get any further, this is also the 100th episode. Yay! Yay. So we put a sponsorship on it. <laughs> hey, this is a costume fit for the online sponsorship thing. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Uh, isn't that for your dog? Was it for the dog? This project is actually really expensive and I actually did a fair amount of online shopping to find the best deals on parts and to save money anywhere I could possibly save money. So that's why we got Honey to sponsor this video. You've probably already heard of Honey before, but if you haven't, Honey is an online browser extension that works with most of the popular browsers. You can use it at over 37,000 websites. It will search the internet for a bunch of saving codes and automatically applies them. So you don't have to go and search the whole internet for coupon codes anymore. So with Peter's ultralight, he was actually able to use Honey on Michael's Arts and Crafts and save on his seat covering material. Just a click of a button. So Honey's super easy to install, just go to joinhoney.com slash petershreeple and it only takes two clicks. There's literally no reason not to use Honey for everything you buy online. It's free and is super easy to install. That's joinhoney.com slash petershreeple. Just click the link in the description, it can't get any easier than that. All our Honey downloaders, make sure you download Honey with the link in the description. Go to our website, petershreeple.com, you can add some of our merch. For a limited number, we'll be able to give away free merch, and everyone after that will give you a heavy discount on some items. All items will be discounted, just make sure you download Honey with our link. Alright, for all of you that are kind of new, this is actually my third airplane. This is the Mark III Ultralight. This one's gas powered, unlike my previous electric airplanes. Basically, since I was a kid, I've always loved the idea of flying in a shoe box. Well, not technically a shoe box, more like a cardboard box. So this is as close to that as possible because flying the first airplane, I got a little bit of taste of flight, but it was never really intended to fly for a very long time or to do much. But this plane was actually built to do more. So I can, you can sit in it, it's like an aerial motorcycle, you got your sides, you can just look out, and it's totally awesome. So this is also like a final wrap of this video, you're gonna see more of the airplane, but if you actually wanna see more of the in-depth build process, there's a part one, part two, and part three that you'll see. Was there a part four? Yes. Oh, okay, there's a part four video. So check this out if you want more information. This is just the flying and the last bits of detail. The plane was completed since the last couple videos. Basically, the only thing left to do is cover the wings, make sure they all fit, and take it to the field. So we did all that stuff, we got to the field. It was getting dark, we actually set up the airplane and had to come back the next day to do the initial flights because there's no way we could do it because it was getting just too dark that one day. We went about this very slowly because the last time I did this, I rushed it, and we all know how that one went. Ooh, that was a scary landing. Oh. So we wait and balance the plane first, and we got the CG kind of where I think it should have been. All right, we're doing CD checking, and Sam has done the math, and it looks like we're actually very good, and right now I'm just physically verifying it, so we're good to fly. Once we got the weight and balance figured out and everything, it was time for some short hops, just to kind of get a feel for the things. So we took it down the runway, we hopped it, but it was still nose heavy. Rudder pedal 
pedals are a little bit too rubbery. Like I have my feet at different positions where I need to skid on the rudder pedals and those things are just grabbing and I'm a hard time moving the rudder. So I'm gonna take them out and see if this is a little bit better. All right, so this is in the very nose of the airplane right here. So it's still, I think it's about 10 pounds. It needs 10 pounds out of the nose. So we'll try it again and see how, how it feels. That is much better. All right, so what I think we'll do is we'll check for fuel. We'll check everything. We'll check all the wires. Everything looks good and I'll just go around. So with all the adjustments done and the plane ready to go, it was time to simply send it. Now a lot could possibly go wrong at this stage. We did all our testing, but you know, you never know. The plane could take off, the wings could fall off. The plane could take off, I could get struck by lightning. The plane could take off, the engine shuts off and it just completely falls up into the landing. Or the plane could take off and the whole thing just goes perfectly fine and I fly around and enjoy it. All right, boys, this is for all the marvels. Actually, we're gonna do one quick run. I have a slight like three degrees of flaps I put in, so I'm gonna take it off, see how that feels. Since I know the plane is structurally sound and no cables are loose, I'm gonna climb out of 500, because actually the initial plan is just to be... Okay, stop. Apparently I get a little jumbled up when I'm excited, so what I'm trying to say here is, I was trying to get the plane basically above 500 feet because something could go wrong in there and I have a little more time to think if I'm a little bit higher. Plus I know the airplane is structurally sound and the wings are gonna fall off. So simply climbing up to altitude, I'm actually a little bit safer because I can also use the BRS if something were to actually go wrong because the higher it is, the better it has a chance of working. All right, it's time to fly. Let's do this. It is definitely underpowered. Okay, with that flight out of the way, I had a lot of ideas of what was wrong with the airplane. One, I think the incidence was wrong, which is basically the angle of the uh, wing where it sits relative to the center line of the fuselage. It's still mildly nose heavy, and I think the propeller sucks. Because when I was flying, I noticed at my tachometer at full power, the RPM was still like 7.5K. It's supposed to get up to 8K. So I'm thinking the propeller's fluttering a little bit because it looks a little bit soft around the corners. Like it may not be sturdy enough for this. We took the electric motors off because there's just not enough thrust to really run them right now. So those are off the airplane. I added a counterbalance to the elevator too because I wanted to see if the elevator itself was just too heavy where in flight it was just kind of dropping down because of all the weight. So now it's actually a little bit more neutral. So it's kind of easier and it takes less stick pressure for me to hold it at a straight level. 
snowball attitude. We also increased the amount of incidents in the wing, so it's flying a little bit more neutral. So the wing itself is pitched back and the elevator stuff is neutral, so that creates less drag overall in the airframe. Another thing is the propeller was kind of crap. I put out a feeler on Instagram of asking people like, hey, does anyone have a propeller or something that I could borrow? And someone actually came through. Uh, this club, but they helped me out, they got me a prop, and I actually got a test fly this thing the, the very next day, which is awesome because, you know, there's no way I was gonna be able to order a propeller and get it in time for this whole adventure. So with the propeller installed, we had one more thing to do, which is added the wingtips, because that would help the airflow come off the edge of the wings and hopefully reduce the wingtip vortices sizes, because I was feeling this thing was really draggy out at the tips, because it's a high lift airfoil. All right, with all these mods done, the only thing really left to do is fly the airplane. So enjoy this huge compilation of all, all the montage stuff. I'm enjoying it a lot. I think there is still some, you know, stuff I can probably come back and tweak. Cause uh, 
Overall, the plane actually ended up being a little bit over budget on weight. It ended up being about 50 to 70 pounds higher than my projected weight, which is uh, an empty weight of 150 pounds without fuel in it and without the BRS. It ended up being about 240 pounds right now as is. The parachute weighs like 25 pounds, so that's on top of that. So it could stand to be a little bit lighter. Now the plane actually does fly a little bit fast for this motor propeller engine combination. I was really expecting this to work better for my weight and it would have if I actually made the plane lighter. So now I have to look at maybe a bigger motor or maybe a adjustable pitch propeller. Cause right now, this is what's happening. Is that propeller is really mainly designed for paramotors and paramotors generally fly pretty slow. So with that, you, ha you set your blades at a certain pitch. Cause if you imagine you take a screw and you have a fine and a coarse thread. Now, if you run them both at the same speed and stick them into a piece of wood, the coarse thread goes a lot faster and the fine thread takes a little bit longer to get there. Now this is kind of like a fine thread propeller. So when I hit 45 miles an hour, the plane, the plane has to turn that engine so fast to kind of make it go anywhere to go faster and climb. Cause my plane wants to climb around 45 to 50 miles an hour. And the propeller is meanwhile, full, fully open. So it doesn't want to climb. So that's one thing I'm gonna look for is an adjustable pitch propeller, maybe before committing to buy a big, buying a bigger engine. Although I think I will probably need a bigger engine because I would like to fly at a lower throttle setting for a better fuel burn and also for the life of the motor. So maybe one used Viterazi engine with two hours on it will be available on eBay or <laughs> wherever, because uh, who knows? A little help, please. The Ortex is pretty sweet. I really enjoy putting this on. I put it on with my dad. We just covered it. It took no more than a day to do. I had to wait 24 hours for the glue to fully cure and I came back and just shrunk it. Don't pay attention too closely. It's not fully shrunk yet on like the wing tips because the end tips, the ribs are actually shrinking or pulling in. They're not actually strong enough to support the weight of the covering trying to shrink them. So I gotta address that. So there's still a little bit more work to do there. I think we have some extra footage too. If you are a Patreon, I posted the 360 degree footage. It may also be available later on my website. If you guys wanna see some sneak peeks of this project, I was actually posting stuff on Instagram well ahead of the time you'll see this video. Definitely go check out the additional footage and stuff on the websites. I'm probably gonna dump the raw clips out there as well. Also, huge thanks to Honey for making this possible because uh, I had to spend quite a bit more money on this thing and hopefully the money earned from the sponsorship will help me get a bigger engine so I can fly a little more and do more content for you guys. So thanks for watching. All right, that's it. Should I just, yeah. Okay, no. <laughs> oh, one last thing. Plans. No, no plans for this one, unfortunately. The CAD design is really just a shell of what I actually had to do. And plus there's so many undocumented design changes. I'm not comfortable releasing plans for this airplane just yet. It will also have to go through an actual aeronautical engineer before I decide to do something like that. Plus it has some weird tendencies I'll probably talk about in a more vlog style video later. So no plans just yet. What's up, Goofy? Well, now we can fly again. <laughs> Is it good? And it's still recording! <laughs>